Hi, welcome to this Aerospace Group Design Aircraft Simulation Tutorial where I'm going to show you how to make a simple aircraft in SOLIDWORKS and bring it into the Unity environment. Our objectives are firstly to understand the importance of coordinate systems and model origins in SOLIDWORKS and Unity and getting them coordinated. Uh, then we're going to make a very simple aircraft with parts and arrange them into an assembly. Uh, and then bring that assembly, export that assembly from SOLIDWORKS using the Visualize tool and then finally import that geometry into a Unity project. Okay, so today I'm using SOLIDWORKS 2022. It shouldn't really matter which version you're using as long as it's a recent one. Uh, let's get going. So let's create a part. I'm gonna, let's draw the wing first. So if we look in the bottom left hand corner here of uh, SOLIDWORKS window, we can see what's called a triad here with X, Y, and Z on. And these are the directions or the uh, orientation of the axes that SOLIDWORKS is using. And the convention in Unity is that Z is forward, uh, X is to the left or right, and Y is up. So when we're drawing things in aircraft, we're gonna start by drawing things with Z forwards. So if we're gonna draw a wing, uh, the spanwise bit of the wing needs to be in the X direction. Okay, so I'm going to select the top plane and I'm going to create a sketch on it. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use, this is the origin here, and I'm going to use, if we're drawing half a wing, I'm drawing the, the port wing on here. And I'm going to use that as the starting point of my wing. So that's the a reference point for everything. In fact, the whole aircraft will be referenced ultimately from this point. So let's give it some dimensions. Uh, the box uh, was about a meter long. Um, so let's make our wing a thousand meters, a thousand millimeters long. Give it some thickness. And it really doesn't matter for this exercise. Um, 10 millimeters thick, let's make it 20. Okay, we've got ourselves a wing and let's save that straight away. Next up, let's create a fuselage. So, we want the aircraft fuselage to be in the Z direction, so I'm going to work on the front plane. So that's going to be our X, Y. If we look on here at the bottom, we've got X and Y has appeared, so we're looking down the axis of the aircraft. And I'm just going to draw a simple rectangle around that. And I'll use the origin here as the center of our rectangle. So I'm going to click on the origin, then I'm going to do shift click on the center point of that. And then I'm going to say make them vertical and that keeps it in the middle. Click in empty space, click on the origin, click on the shift click on the center point of that and make that horizontal. And so now that is centered off on the middle there. So whatever I do, it stays around there. And in terms of how wide it is, we know our payload's 100 millimeters wide um, or whatever it is specified. So I'm just going to make this fuselage, let's say 150 millimeters. I'm just going to make it square. Okay, let's give it some length. Um, we know our box is a meter long, so let's just make our fuselage. Like there. I've noticed on here this is actually extruding from the mid plane, um, so it doesn't actually matter where you do it from. In fact, I think on this one I'm going to just do it to blind, it'll just do it in one direction and I'm going to make it go the other way so it's going backwards. So this point here, reference on the fuselage, is the front bit, it's going to be the front bit of the fuselage. Okay, with the parts it's not so critical the references are right, it's when you make the assembly it's all got to be referenced in the right direction, but the more you can do to get the parts with the intelligence built in with the references in the right place, the better. So if we just check here where our origin is, we can see there our origin is on the front there, that's a really useful place to have an origin. Great, let's save that. 
What else do we need? We need a tailplane. Let's quickly draw one of those. So we're going to be on top plane, draw our sketch. Z is forward, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle on there. And I'm going to center it on the origin again. So shift click those two, make them coincidence this time. So that's now in the middle. And oh, let's make our wing tailplane half the width of a wing panel. And we can just adjust this to that kind of looks like a tailplane. That'll do. Features, give it some thickness. Make that five mil thick. Really doesn't matter for this. Okay, jobs are good and save that call it tailplane and we need a fin so this time we want to do it sideways on so we're going to pick the right plane do a sketch on that and as the thing swivels around we can see y is up and z is forward so that's fine this is going to be our fin and i'm going to anchor the fin on the origin of this Part. And it doesn't really matter how big it is. If the tail plane was 500, let's make this one more like half the span of the. Okay, that'll do. That's the that's the fin. Give it a bit of thickness. I'm actually going to do this one from mid plane. So that means it's nice, it'll be symmetrical. Um, if I the origin is on the symmetry plane, so it means if I stick that on the center line of the aircraft, my fin is going to be in the middle. So that's good, that saves me a job. And save that as fin. Okay, there are parts. Let's make uh, an assembly out of them. Okay, so we've got a blank assembly. Let's get some parts in. Um, what I'm going to do is put the wing in first because that leading edge of the wing on the center line is going to be the reference for the whole aircraft. So I'm going to put that part in first. So I'm going to go to assembly, insert components, and then wing. And if I just do tick without doing anything else, it's going to drop in the world with my origin of that part in the origin of the assembly. So let's just check that. So there we go. We can just see there that's the origin um, of the the world, and the origin of the part is in the same place. So that's a little simple step there, but it makes such a difference to, to getting your models uh, easy to work with, and that we now know that that is the reference point for the whole aircraft. Um, centered on the wing leading edge and just checking it's the right way around so Z is forward X is to the side and that's fine Y is up so we've got a good start there um, we need two wings um, so we could put another one in or we could just be lazy and mirror it so as ever lazy is smart in engineering mirror plane because we're on the the center we can actually use the right hand plane as our mirror Okay, sometimes mirroring is a bit funny, so you sometimes have to check what SolidWorks does, but that looks okay to me. Uh, there's various different options you can do if it doesn't come out quite right. Okay, so that's our full span wing. Let's add in the fuselage. So fuselage, and if I just drop this one in by clicking tick, notice there that it aligns our reference up with the origin of the world which is set the wing and we set the origin of this part to be there and that's fine uh, but actually what we want to now do is slide it up and down because as a designer we want to put the fuselage exactly where we want um, if you try and move it now it's fixed because it's just dropped in and uh, it's constrained that way okay if you right click on the part you should get this context menu up and what we need to do is click float and that means it will move 
So now we want to put the fuselage roughly where we want it and you can slide it around but a, a neat trick is if you do right click again and then move with triad this thing appears. Notice it's a similar same as this one and it means that we can now move it around. All we want to do is move it forwards and we're just guessing here um, but that seems about right. A tiny bit further forwards and I'm actually going to put it so that the wing is sitting on top. Okay, that's good enough. Let's get the tailplane in. Okay, so it's good to show things going wrong. So I've just put the tailplane in, um, but we can't see it because it's uh, inside the wing. Uh, it's in there somewhere. Uh, so we've got the problem of now, how do we move it if we can't see it? So one thing you can do if you right click on it and then do isolate, it shows the thing on its own. And now you can right click on it and do stuff. So what we're gonna do is make it float so we can move it. And then we're gonna do right click, move with triad, and then just move it back a bit. And then there's a little tiny window button here. It's not hard to find, but if you click e exit isolate, it will reappear again. Okay, it's a good guess of where it was, but not quite right. Move with triad, let's stick it just on the end there. I'll do bring it down a bit. Fine. Great. Let's get the fin in. We can see this one, that's fine. So it's fixed as it goes in. Do float, do move with triad, Z direction, slide it back, stick it on. Great, that looks like a plane. All right, we've pretty much done our cat. Uh, I didn't save it, so first rule of your work is to save uh, early and often. So let's call it um, blocky plane. So CAD is fine for doing the detailed design work. Uh, when we're working in a simulation environment, we need to convert this into kind of a graphics format that we can use uh, that holds the geometry, but it doesn't necessarily hold all the design information. Um, so what we're going to do is use a tool called SolidWorks Visualize. So if you've got the student version of SOLIDWORKS, it comes as part of it. If Visualize is not there, which it won't be by default, if you go up to the gear icon, and do add-ins and then scroll down the list till you find SOLIDWORKS Visualize. If you tick that box there, add in a startup, do OK. Um, it will then appear here and there will be a tools thing here where you can access SOLIDWORKS Visualize from here. And the only thing we need from this really is just a way of exporting the geometry. So if we click there, what we need to do is do click export simple. And I had something else open in the tool, so no, I don't want to save that. And it will wear away, and sometimes you think, what's happened? But, but quite often it will open the application in the background, and it won't come to the foreground, so you think nothing is happening. But if you look down on your toolbar here, or your programs bar, you should find a little sort of camera icon thing that's appeared, that's started. And it's not the best software in the world, but we just need to use it for the exporting. And there's our blocky plane. Um, and immediately we notice that SOLIDWORKS has done something a bit stupid in that there's the coordinate reference system, but it's not where we put it. We put it on the leading edge of the wing and then um, SOLIDWORKS visualizer said, I'm going to move it. So it's put it on the floor. Um, so thanks SOLIDWORKS, let's fix that. So if you go up to here and expand out the geometry, here's our blocky plane. There's all sorts of things you can do about moving stuff around, but because because we've done the right job to start off with, it's pointing in the right way, but they put an offset in. And just for fun, the visualize code has moved our offset. So now when we look at that, in this not very good window, but we can see that the origin, our X, Y, Z uh, origin is at the leading edge of the wing. Uh, and that's where we want it. Okay, everything else can be left as it is. And then to export it, what you have to do is go along here. You have to be selecting the tree. It doesn't work if it's not selected. And you do this little 
export button and you do export all and it's going to export it as a um, .obg, an object file. So that's completed. OK, we've exported our model. Great, we can close that. You don't really need to save that. You're probably never going to use it again. Um, but we need to make sure we've saved our assembly. That's good. Now we need to go through the process of importing that into our Unity environment, which you set up hopefully in a previous tutorial. Okay, so we're in the Unity environment that you've set up. Um, so it'll look something like this, probably won't be identical, but we've got a kind of runway, we've got our wind tunnel test thing, and we've got like a workbench with our box on. And what we need to do is bring in the geometry that we've just created. And to do that, you go up to Assets, Import New Asset, and then Find the file that you've just exported. So it's sometimes a bit cryptic of actually where it's been saved. Um, I found pretty reliable if you use quick access on a PC like this, it will find it. If not, uh, go to the directory where you saved it. Blocky plane version three, and we import it. And here it's appeared in our assets folder here, blocky plane version three. And what I can do is just drag that into the hierarchy view and if I mouse is in the uh, scene view and I click F, it will zoom into it. And there we go. There's our blocky plane that we just designed in SolidWorks. It's applied a sort of um, white material to it as a default. And here are our triads. So we did it right because when it's come in, uh, Unity has recognized that as the center of the aircraft. So the leading edge on the center line is our reference. We've got Z forwards and Y up. Uh, and if you're eagle eyed, you've noticed that the X axis has swapped from one side to the other. Um, the coordinate systems in Unity and SolidWorks are actually mirror images of each other in the about the vertical plane. So X is positive uh, towards the right, which is a um, left-hand coordinate system, whereas in SOLIDWORKS um, positive X is to the left. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. The export has sorted that out, everything's swapped over and it will work absolutely fine. Great, so we've got our plane here and we can move it around so we can click on these uh, triad arrows to, to move it around. Uh, if you click on a square on an axis it'll move it around in that plane. So let's move around the horizontal plane. Okay, let's put our plane up at 10 meters. So here in the inspector, we can see the coordinates here. So Y is vertical. I'm going to put that to 10, so units of 10 meters. Uh, I'm going to zoom out. And there's our plane. So hit F, zoom in. And then to rotate around, I'm clicking, holding Alt and then the right mouse button. And there we go. So we've gone from successfully building some parts in SolidWorks, getting our coordinate systems lined up staff with, we've imported it into Unity, and now we've got a graphic object that we can use to apply some aerodynamics and inertial properties to.